everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're gonna do some space dyeing using some green acid dyes and some fun yarn that unfortunately is discontinued. The yarn today that I'm gonna use is some of the 8020 sock yarn from Dyer Supplier. Uh, Dyer Supplier is now out of business, so and I think I think this yarn came in one of the samples when I was featured in a knit crate in May 2020. Well, anyway, in this dye bath, I have 16 cups of water, and I'm gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar and bring over the yarn that I did not pre-soak yet. I'm adding some zip dyes onto it, and we're gonna bring in the yarn. The dye bath is still cold. Um, the heat isn't on or anything yet. Now, this 80-20 yarn is 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon. And wool to dye for may have an 80-20 yarn. I'm hesitating and blanking for a minute. I'm pretty sure though that Nomad has an 80-20 sock yarn if you're looking for something similar. 75-25 uh, seems to be fairly like much a staple but anyway this yarn is pretty absorbent and I honestly don't mind if we end up with some white patches here today because we're gonna have some fun so I'm gonna arrange this 200 grams of yarn here in the pan by adding two little twists two or three little twists to the yarn so that way some of the yarn is on the bottom some is on the top there's some variety in there. It's not the same skein on top all the time. Because now we're gonna heat things up, and then once things are hot, we're gonna come in with our dyes that all happen to be green today. This is not a leave no dye behind video today because these dyes aren't really leftovers. I mixed them to potentially use in a project and then didn't, so we'll use them here. So the three dye colors we have are from Dharma Training Company and Jacquard. We have Dharma Sour Apple and Kelly Green, and then Jacquard Crocodile Green, which is a lot less bright. I measured out 0.5 grams of each of the three dyes, dissolved it in hot tap water, that was all off camera, and then in each of these bottles I added all the dye and filled them up. So we have about half of a gram of dye in around 150 milliliters of liquid. Now, the volume doesn't matter a ton because I plan to add all this dye onto our yarn, but maybe it matters a little bit. So now I'm gonna need to decide if I wanna increase the amount of acid that we have in our dye bath because greens can strike a little bit slower. I don't know as much about how fast the crocodile green strikes. I haven't used that color quite as much, even though it is a gorgeous non-bright but not too teal green. Um, it's an amazing green and I do need to use it more. But anyway, I'll wait for our dye bath to heat up and then I'll be back. I'm feeling impatient and there is the tiniest, tiniest amount of movement in here. <laughs> I just want to dye our yarn. Okay, I decided I will add more acid. Let's add one, two, three tablespoons, which are a bit randomly applied. Let's do our crocodile green first, because this is the color I know the least about. So I've unscrewed the cap, and I'm literally just pouring it on. <laughs> We may come over with the leftovers in a moment. Okay. Ooh. So, I mean, I see the color moving, but it does look like that some of it maybe is going to strike with where we've placed it, which would be very, very cool. Okay, I think this is our Kelly Green. This one's probably going to take over everything. I'm purposefully not moving the yarn at this point. Okay, this is our sour apple, which I happen to know also spreads out. So I'm adding that one there and then over here. Now, this might not feel multidimensional once, <laughs> once all the dyes have struck, but there's a chance. So there's a tiny bit of dye left in each of the containers. I think I'm going to save that until we move our yarn. And 
goodness. Let's go ahead and wait 15 minutes and then we'll pop back in to see how different things look because I have a feeling things may look quite different, but also they may not. It's hard to say. Like on camera right now, I don't know if you can feel the three tones. In person I do though. Look at that spread. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the heat to low because we are bubbly. Now, I do still see distinct tones here, here, and here, but something has spread all over. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, let's move it now. Yeek! Oh, this is pretty. Very, very pretty. Okay, it's just kind of in there a little randomly, but we're gonna come and just add these little bit of leftovers, which isn't that much dye, but may as well. And for good measure, another three tablespoons of white vinegar. Now we have one and a half grams of dye for 200 grams of yarn. So I'm anticipating that we should get all the dye to strike onto the yarn. But hopefully you noticed when I lifted the yarn up, there wasn't really white left because unlike other times I've done this sort of technique, the greens will spread. <laughs> That's what they do. Uh, some of these greens likely would spread if I had hand painted the dye, steam set it, washed it clear, then put it back in here. Some of the greens would bleed and spread. That's just what some of those pigments do. So uh, anyway, I am going to now wait 30 minutes and then we will uh, come back. It has been 30 minutes. I'm expecting that we'll see a little bit of green left. Ooh, I see some whites down there. That's exciting. Or by whites, I mean more pastel area. Okay, yeah, we do still have light green. That isn't super unusual, and some of that will probably remain in the dye bath. I've gone ahead and turned off the heat, but because all the places where I would put cooling yarn are currently occupied. I'm gonna leave the yarn here in the pot for a little bit to cool off. I doubt we'll stay in here until it cools completely because I'm about to wash some yarn. So maybe it'll only be 15 to 30 minutes, but I'll pump back over once we're ready. It's probably only been 15 minutes. Uh, you can see we're still very, very steamy. Sometimes if there's a little color left, I would leave the yarn in the dye bath to cool until things run clear. But other times, sometimes if it's just that little left, that might be something that could bleed out. Now, the yarn is very pretty. There's not a ton of contrast between the different colors. And I think if we had done something like blues, maybe there'd be a little bit more contrast between the different hues, but it's still very pretty and very, very green. There's a lot of dimension here in this colorway. So anyway, I'm gonna go set this aside so it can cool off completely, and then we'll go wash it. Time to wash our very green yarn. And I'm really hoping we don't have bleeding here. Okay, we're gonna add some soap. It looks like I'm adding a lot, but I'm near the end of that bottle of soap, so I had added water to the bottle. Uh-oh, where is my tie? Now this is something I want to avoid. Okay, to avoid tangles, I don't want to tangle the yarn around the zip tie. And, oh, okay, that's a little bit, but with the soap in here, that's not bad. That's similar to the color of the water in our dye bath. So I was just afraid, because sometimes if you see a little bit of light color and then you squeeze the yarn, it gets way darker. That's not bad. <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't be a problem given the ratio of dyed yarn, but sometimes it's hard to predict. Now, had I used almost any other color, I think we would have ended up with a lot more white left in it. Whereas here, 
<laughs> we have a lot of the pastel green. And that is just the nature of greens. And I still remember, goodness, it was one of the first times, okay, it's about the same. Um, it was one of the very first times that I ever was speckling and I wanted to create this speckled color with the green and the green spread so much. And I remember feeling so confused about why the technique wasn't working the way I thought because green spread and I don't think I realized that. And so the greens took over a lot more than what I had intended. But this is fun and I love monochromatic kinds of colorways like this that are color on color. We're still seeing that very pastel but still green uh, colorway. So I'm going to add a tiny bit more soap and I'm going to wash and rinse this out mostly off camera but I figure well, let's get all soapy and just take a look at what the color looks like to just get a feel and of course I mean I guess that's worse than what it was without the soap but all things considered still not that bad so I'll be back after a couple more rinses and we'll see how we are I haven't seen a whole lot of change uh, in a bit of time. And so what I'm going to do now is add a tiny dollop of some white vinegar. We're going to fill this up and soak and see if that makes a difference or not. And I'll be honest, it might be a not. Although actually, that is looking better for sure. Like way better. Now, this isn't something that always helps, but sometimes just a little bit of vinegar can stop bleeding. Uh, and it doesn't always necessarily explode again as I rinse that vinegar out. But I'm gonna let the yarn soak in here for a little bit of time, and then we'll see where we are. It's been about five minutes. There's this, oh, thank you, Stove. There's the slightest hint of some green. But see, now we're gonna go straight from that. And I don't know how much vinegar it was we added, but it was a bit. And we're gonna start rinsing this out, which I'm showing you because I want you to believe me that I'm rinsing it and that I didn't add more acid. So we might see more green come, but we also may not. And I've never had a customer complain that my yarn smells like vinegar. So adding vinegar to the rinse bath is not something I do a lot. And if it was a heavy bleeder, then I would soak in vinegar and go steam set again. Uh, I would not do what I am doing here. Uh, but let's see. All right, see, we rinsed out the acid and it's coming back. Um, it's very, very slight though, so I'm gonna call it and just know that some colors are more likely to have a little bit of color come out. And so always wash your hand dyed yarn alone or with light colors. But I'll show you when the yarn is dry. This yarn is so soft that I'm bummed. I think this is the last of it that I have in my stash. Maybe I'll find one more random skein, but it is a lovely yarn base, and so oh, that's just too bad. But let's shift on to the happier. The happier is that this colorway is lovely. And yes, we have three greens that are similar, and that from far back, this really, really looks just like a green tonal yarn. I don't know if it's coming through on camera. There are distinct green hues. We've got more olive, more grass, and then like one that's a little bit more bright um, through here as well. But greens are hard just because they spread so much. And so I don't think there's any way we could do this type of technique and not end up with green along there. I mean, maybe there's a pH. If we added enough acid, then that wouldn't happen. But I don't know. I feel like some of the different hues are coming through more in person than they do on camera. And that's something that I sometimes struggle to capture. But 
Either way, hopefully you can see it's a fun green yarn and it'll have a lot of fun to it when it gets turned into something. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I love to dye yarn. I love to play around with different colors, different brands, different yarn bases, different techniques, and then see what we can create. And sometimes uh, things come out exactly as I expect, sometimes things don't, but I like to share things when I try it for the first time because that way we can all learn together. And I think that there's something very magical about that. Now, if you love the content that I'm creating and want to help support the content here, uh, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. It's a way that you can contribute directly to tools, materials, equipment, and things that I need to continue to create videos. And in exchange, there's some fun perks, um, such as advanced notice of Chemnitz Creations shop restocks, a monthly Patreon newsletter, and more. You can find more details at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. And then you can also join to become a channel member here on YouTube, where you get a fun badge next to your name, custom Chemnitz emotes, and you get to show everyone that you're a huge Chemnitz fan. If you choose. But no matter what, subscribe and turn on notifications. I try to post at least twice a week, and we have a lot of fun over here. Thank you so much for watching. P.S. Do any of you remember back when I started my videos, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz? I don't know when I made the switch. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, bye.